As an update of where CUNA is on the Telephone Consumer Protection Act, this week we are sending a letter to the NCUA about the TCPA. This law was enacted in 1991 and is under the jurisdiction of the FCC. It governs the communications with consumers when calling them using an auto dialer to their cell phone. On July 10th, the FCC released a declaratory ruling impacting the ability of credit unions to contact their consumers. While CUNA supports the privacy rights of consumers on their cell phones and their ability to protect financial information, we have concerns that this goes far beyond the scope or purpose of the TCPA, which incidentally was enacted in 1991 before the common use of cell phones or mobile devices. In the order, the FCC recognized the importance of communications from financial institutions and actually provided an exemption for financial institutions. However, they put considerations on this section of the exemption which are nearly unworkable for credit unions. For example, the calls have to be free to end user calls so there can be no charge to the consumer on their cell phone. And there's also an arbitrary limit on the number of times consumers can be contacted. Um, there are also several other issues in the order that are impacting credit unions. For example, they expand the definition of the auto dialer and they also uh, make it very ambiguous about how consumers can revoke consent to these calls. Additionally, there's also um, a lack of clarity in what, how credit unions can contact reassigned numbers. In addition, there are also several other concerns in the order. While the NCUA does not actually have jurisdiction over the TCPA, we are hoping that their Consumer Protection Office will act on credit unions' behalf because this law has the potential of not only creating substantial compliance burdens for credit unions, it also could subject them to frivolous TCPA-related litigation. Additionally, we also believe that consumers want and need to receive important updates on their cell phones, including information about fraud, data breaches, and other account information. CUNA plans to continue to advocate for our credit unions on this issue, and we are planning to work with members of Congress as well as other impacted industries. So the NCUA board approved a new member business lending rule at its June open board meeting with a 60-day comment period. And this rule, a proposed rule, represents a major overhaul of NCUA's member business lending rule, one that we haven't seen before without a major economic or legislative uh, impact to make this change. And what NCUA is doing is they're calling this a change from a prescriptive to a principles-based regulation. And what this means is that NCUA is removing most of the requirements that aren't called for by the Federal Credit Union Act and replacing these with pr broad-based principles which they will issue guidance and which will require credit unions to address these in their member business lending policies and procedures, thereby giving credit unions much more flexibility, but also requiring credit unions to have more depth and detail in their policies. Although we're not gonna go into the rule in complete de detail here, there's four things that you should know. First of all, it creates a new, new category of loans called commercial loans. And these are different than the member business loans in that commercial loans encompass the complete universe of what we would consider normally consider commercial loans or business loans. The member business lending or member business loan cap will remain and NCA will keep that terminology for calculating the cap. So some loans could be a commercial loan but not be a member business loan. Examples of these would be loan participations to non-members. Secondly, this, loan, this uh, participation removes all waiver requirements and waivers in the current member business lending rule are attached to attached to the requirements. So the personal guarantee requirement will be gone, thus the waiver requirement will be gone. Similarly with loan participations, non-member loan participations will no longer require a waiver to exceed the cap. Credit unions will be able to do non-member loan participations as long as they fit within their commercial lending policy. Third, it changes the calculation for the credit union cap. It's removing the 12.25 times net worth requirement and just going with the, the current calculation. And what this does is it simplifies the rule and the 12.25% is not actually in the Federal Credit Union Act. So it's simplifying the rule. It's not giving credit unions a large number or a large amount of new uh, a capacity to do member business lending. And last, it, it creates an exemption for small credit unions. Credit unions under $250 million will be ex that don't do a lot of member business loans will be exempt from some of the requirements. As CUNA develops its comment letter, we'd love to hear from credit unions on what you have to think. It's important for credit unions to comment as this is how NCUA hears how credit unions feel about the rule. 
And there's one specific point that we think credit unions should be interested in, and it's the one negative thing that, that we've heard the most about from credit unions. And is that it could be more complicated for credit unions to comply with this rule as they don't have specific requirements in the rule, these will be moved to guidance. And we have not yet seen the guidance, and this could complicate credit unions as they craft member business lending or commercial loan policies, and as they have these policies approved by the board and work through them. Without the exact prescriptive requirements now, things could be a little more complicated. With that, we'd appreciate to see credit unions' comments. We have a series of questions that credit unions can use to help with their comments letters on our website. You can use Power Comment to write your comment letter. And we'll also be holding a free webinar on August 20 at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to help explain further details of the member business lending rule. If you have any other questions, please contact me or any of the other advocacy team members about this rule.